Hey everybody, wow, my very first Twitch uh, for the World Music Reaction Channel. And I did a bunch of uh, titles, but the experience was great. But it was really long and I want people on YouTube to get the opportunity as well. So I edited down what was three and a half hours to all, down to two hours. That's how much music I reviewed, but um, thank you all for who came, who did. If you want to see the whole thing, the link is down below. You don't have to be a member because a lot of the stuff in between it, I guess, was kind of funny. But here you go. There's some really tough edits in here, but I just wanted to get in and out of these tracks. Also, the chapters are down below so you can find your favorite one. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoy. See ya. Let me get to the uh, video. I'm going to reset this and let's do it. All right. <laughs> Go, Mr. Bassoon. Okay, before I say anything about this, um, is this close to the arrangement here? Because a lot of times when they, when they do orchestral works, they have a broader amount of musicians to use and stuff and so they have additional arrangements but since we're just speaking on this what i love about this is this is a very intimate section of musicians and you know it's not this big bombastic full orchestra and like i said when i was talking about the donkey kong um review that i did on my channel when there's width in tone like that in space it gives a, a, a better uh, opportunity for the orchestrator to write all these intricate parts. The first thing I want to say, it's just so badass that these guys are so into it. They're all young musicians, and they probably all play, <laughs> probably, you know, just down for definitely doing this. But if you listen to that bounciness that the string's doing, lifting up that the, the bow from it, causing that, that kind of tension, that kind of vibe and stuff, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Peter and the Wolf, a Prokofiev thing, where you, you have answer back, da -da -da -da. Dun, 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 dun. And I want you to listen as I start. I'm going to go back and, and, and just start again. I want you to try to just close your eyes and listen for and see if you can identify parts. You know, see if you can hear. Like, for instance, when the bassoon came in, boom, 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 that bing, 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 bing. You know, see if you can identify because that's what's bitching about watching. I just dated myself, bitching about watching an orchestra is that you can see what's happening if you're not familiar with it. So, anyhow, here we go. I like how he's got like a John Bonham hat on. Okay, briefly, let's talk about dynamics. What's dynamics with an orchestra? It might be as, it, it, as simple as the word as, as using to describe dynamics. Um, is when you take something, an arrangement, and then you bring it down really low. 
and you change the way the musicians are playing uh, an arrangement. And what I mean by that is you could still be going, but if you bring it lower, then it makes it a little more menacing, a little more spooky. And it's the same exact, it could be. I'm not saying that this is. So dynamics are really important. That's why the, the conductor is an absolute must is because you know he's the one even though on on the paper that the music musicians are reading there are these dynamics like a greater than sign lesser than sign or little markings like little soft p's and stuff or f's for forte and stuff it doesn't matter you still need to be guided by you know the composer you know is, is the one that's bringing that life in and out you know so that's really super super cool also i just want to um bring a little bit of attention to the unison arrangement of what the choir is singing is oh, oh yeah is that is that their own language is this one of those video games where they have their, their this is what do you call it vocaloid or something let me see somebody tell me that if this is like a vocaloid oh it's Latin. yeah it could be yeah latin's right okay all right well i I couldn't tell, obviously. Thank you very much. But if you notice that there's the richness that the voices bring, do you notice in a lot of video games that I've been starting to listen to how important vocal and choral arrangements are in the, in the bigger kind of bombastic, I'm, I'm using that word right now, it's the gitch word for me right now, video games that are very gothic and very uh, Nordic sounding in the composition, how important the vocals are with that process, you know, and, and it can cause such dissonance and such pain and such joy, mostly pain, because you're playing a game. You're killing the freaking dragon or something, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, come and kick her ass. And I'm, I'm sorry, I just went South Park on you guys, but um, listen to how the, cor the, the choir's uh, melody and harmonies also are slightly in unison, at least with what we just heard with the musicians. So there's instrumentation backing up, you know, their lines, okay? so. Great answer back in the arrangements right there. If you don't know, those are French horns. Uh, wood blocks and xylophone are so important in arrangements like this. <laughs> All of those are probably gamers, what do you bet? <laughs> Full kit. I love that. <laughs> that killed, man. I fully dug that. And like I said, this was kind of like a, a real intimate um, a setup orchestrally. And stuff. So, what 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 do you think? I mean, see, I don't know exactly what that uh, show and venue was. If it was all Final Fantasy, so I guarantee those were probably all gamers there that you know knew the mu that knows the music. That's usually the draw, right? You go see Beethoven's because you've listened to the music before. If it's Final Fantasy concerts, because you've played the games. I'm assuming. I don't know. I'm stuck on an island by a coconut. I don't know. Um, uh, I hope you don't mind that when I do those kind of. Uh, reviews there that you know if I do talk over it's just a kind of 
you know, these are French horns. That was a piccolo or something like that. I mean, I know there's musicians and composers that are here, but if you're just curious because you're on this journey with me, I like to do that. Um, the brass section is the section that I talk about a lot um, when it comes to these big video game uh, compositions and stuff. They're the ones responsible for those gigantic rip tones. Not <laughs> rips. But <laughs> well, actually, you know what? They kind of have that because it's a rip, you know, and a lot of that does come from like the trombone and the French horns. The French horns was that really super cool looking horn. So they're in charge of that lower bottom end and that power, along with the tuba as well. But you know, that's really, really super important. But what I loved about this one was, there was just, a, there was because of the size of the orchestra and the arrangement, there was a lot of these cool little answer backs. So I've got to kind of look at the video game a little later and see where this was playing and stuff to see if there was uh, character matching. Do you guys think there was character match matching in this? Um, like. Um, how, how an instrumentation or an arrangement matched a character. I don't know. I'm asking you. I'm just, I'm being a little Prokofiev here, who's a composer who was very famous for doing that stuff. There's a ton of one uh, winged arrangements. May I, I, give me a second. May I read some? I'm going to read some of these things while I take a sip of coffee. It's completely. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, apparently there is another... Um, okay, somebody said that's the main villain's theme. So is... Um, I guess everyone's asking me to do Rebirth now. Is Would you guys like me to uh, do Rebirth? Not one winged angel Rebirth. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm going to look that up. Not... One Winged Angel Rebirth. Okay, give me a second, guys. Not One Winged Angel. Whoops. Rebirth. Yeah? Da, da, da. Guys, this was another thing, too, that stresses the crap out of me is me typing live. I've got... I'm the worst. I am actually the worst. As a matter of fact, I, you know, I didn't graduate high school. I'm not ashamed to say, you know, my life kind of took me in a different direction. So English, obviously, I didn't get across English. But <laughs> every time I write, I got a good friend of mine, Mark, and I have other friends that keep an eye on me. And I just figure every time I write something, my byline's going to say, I write good. Let me just get it over with. My grammar sucks and my spelling sucked. <laughs> okay. So is this the one I should be looking at, the very top one? Guys, let me know if this... Do the first video. <clears throat> okay. All right, cool beans. All right, stand by. Sip of coffee, please. Sip of coffee. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do the, the, the first video here, and this is not One Winged Angel Rebirth. Not in the title to dodge copyright. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I'll find out. This is the other thing, too, on this whole journey. I don't know what's going to happen, what I'm going to get blocked when this goes to VOD or something, or I'll be able to chop some segments out of this for everybody. Cool beans, coffee beans. That's right. All right. <clears throat> okay. I'm the coolest grandpa ever. <laughs> no. They do call me Abba Jeebs, though. You guys ever notice that? You know, these puppets that I have here and stuff? I, I was, I'm a ventriloquist, and I used to go to children's hospitals and do special room-to-room -room visits for kids who are in critical treatment and critical care and stuff, and the COVID shut me down, and I still can't get back into the hospitals. But my character name is Abba Jeebs. <laughs> Abba is short for abuelo in Spanish, grandfather. Ugh, I don't know. I stray. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe one day I'll do a reaction with uh, one of my healing dinosaurs, right? That would be bad. Brandon Pterodactyl back there, he's, uh, he's a tough pterodactyl. He's from the east side of... Uh, Jurassic Valley and Brandon here um, I mean I'm sorry and Wyatt is uh, he's actually a chameleon but he thinks that he is a um, oh shit what's uh, uh, blue what was the name of, of blue the dinosaur that blue is in uh, Jurassic Park what is that what was the name of blue what, what kind of a dinosaur raptor raptor so he thinks he's a baby raptor get it chameleon he could be anything he wants baby raptor <laughs> so He's, he's cool and chill. This one back there is a little more tough. He's kind of like uh, the, the uh, insult dog. <laughs> so, anyhow, I'm sorry. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. Velociraptor. Yes. Mahalo. Okay. 
So here we go, guys. Let's do this. This is not one wing angel rebirth. And this is 10 minutes. So let's just go right now. Ah, there we go. So this is actually playing behind this in the real game, and this is just a different mix? Is this what I'm listening to? Hmm. This is gigantic composition. Has a little bit of Danny Elfman right there. Thank you, Zep Pumpkin Eater. I appreciate that. Okay, I don't know if it's me, but maybe it was a little bit of compression that's happening in the playback, but I'm hearing just a little bit of fluttering that doesn't seem to be part of the, um, the, the audio file. This is absolutely huge. So, I mean, this is kind of cool because now we can kind of A-B it briefly from the very first track that we listened to with a smaller intimate orchestra. But at least if you were here for that, you've got kind of some eye candy on what it's taking for these musicians to get what they get, you know, out of their instruments and stuff. But now this is a much bigger, you know, obviously this is a full orchestra and everything. And so now we're hearing everything at a completely... Also, another thing is too, is that what we just saw first was a live recording, which a beast in and of itself for the engineers to actually get good sounds out of that. And I don't know if you noticed, but that particular audio engineering from the live performance of that Final Fantasy one that we saw before, <clears throat> the mics were all attached on the instruments. Doesn't, it's not a bad thing. But so you, you have a different element in engineering that the engineers have to deal with. Plus, like I said, it was intimate. This is huge. This is, this is ginormous. And so this is probably, you know, whether it's done in Prague or in Paramount or something like this, a giant room with, you know, a whole different set of, you know, environment for the engineer. But I got to tell you something, these composers are really putting out some heavy, heavy work because if this music um, repeats itself, or let's, I, like apparently this is a 10 minute piece, okay? Or it's going through some phases. Now, I think I just finished phase one because that's what it says here at the stop. But this, this is, I mean, when do you ever hear a composition in a film go for 10 minutes straight? It has happened, it does happen. But this is some incredible, intense, you know, creative, incredible and intense composition that has to have a certain amount of change in it in order to keep you also in it. I will say one thing, though. I will say one thing. Is that um, the difference is, and I'm sure you've all heard it, if you're here listening to me right now, that's because you're interested in music and, and stuff with your video games and everything, is so much of the nuances that we're hearing right here in this environment do get drowned out in a final mix because you got to bring that into a place where now you have the, the the talking of the characters sometimes that go over it as well as the sound effects that are blowing up and things that are happening so you're you might not be hearing the wood section doing all of this 
and all that sort of stuff. That's just that's the history of composing and media. End of story. Full stop. Stuff that I've done for movies or commercials, I go, oh, yeah, listen to this. And all of a sudden, I listen to the end result going, what the hell just happened to my French horn arrangement? And the thingies got buried by the explosion. So that happened. Okay, let's continue. Big horns. You hear the piano? Jeez, this is huge. Listen how the timpanis and the horns are in unison. Sub hits. Oh, this is cool. I gotta tell you, I don't know if this is the exact music for this scene, but this is actually going really good to what I'm watching. Okay, I've mentioned this once before. Now that we're, I guess we're into phase three. Sorry about that, guys. I know sometimes I don't stop in the in, in everybody's favorite place. I guess it's really no good time to stop. But um, how I've mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, alongside with these giant timpani hits that usually come with, also uh, in unison, these you know really sharp staccato punches and stuff like that by the strings and the horns. Like uh, I call them mini hits because they all are in unison in most cases. But what's really super cool, you want to know to me and what I've done and, and what I was taught, you know, is, is so important, is the anxiety that the string section causes when they just go So you can have the timpanis and the horns and everything, you know, and the choirs It's like going shit, you know, it's coming up behind me. So it's like, I'm going to hate you in the face. Watch out behind you here. I go, you know, that kind of a thing. And so that's what's really so interesting to these. This, this whole new world of video games for me on this capacity is absolutely amazing because I, obviously I'm not, uh, I, I don't know what the visual trajectory has been about the development of games and how good they've gotten and stuff like that. But the, the, res the what, not the respect, the equally yoked attention to the power of music to video games like this is amazing. And I think that's why at least, you know, if I'm gonna do a video like this and I might try to break off and do maybe the same one with an orchestra, is just because they're the unsung heroes, right? So the devs, <laughs> I learned that term when I interviewed Marty. So the developers at the end of the day, they get to, and the, and the, and the artwork people, you know, when they're watching a video game, you could see that, right? So you're going, wow, what great things. But you know, the music is something that's in the background, but in the case of this composer or composers like this and the musicians that perform here, you don't really get a chance unless you are that dedicated in an OST to go, I'm gonna go check this out and see what it's like. Or if you're obviously a gaming composer or a composer, you know, you're inside the conversation. 
but this is just absolutely huge. It's mind numbing. I mean, I'm getting a little, a little sweaty on on just the energy this was creating for me. See how the strings are giving you that, like it's the running vibe. It's not the bombastic stuff that's giving you that vibe, it's those strings. <laughs> with the cello and the violas are doing there, causing that flight of the butterfly, uh, bumblebee kind of vibe. Butterfly. These compositions. You know, the one thing I want to bring up is the energy in which the musicians put into performing this. Think about this now. We're getting close to 10 minutes, and so far I didn't hear any, um, you know, pauses in between any of these phases here. And if this is a through and through, and you watch, you know, an orchestra and stuff, they they are they they got to be mopping that stuff off and just keep. I mean, in a live session, of course, you know, you know, you're playing in a session, anything, you know, you can phase and you can do chunks, but. The type of energy that's going into these performances and stuff is absolutely insane, and it's nonstop. There was one little breather, I think, in phase three where I thought, where I went, oh, that's kind of cool, where they just kind of lightened up a little bit, and there was like a piccolo and a flute, and maybe a clarinet did, did a, a, a little bit of a run for about, I thought it was going to be longer, but it ended up only being a couple bars. And these guys are just hauling ass from stop to bottom, top to bottom.
Jesus. I'm sorry, I gotta go back and listen to that little section one more time because listen, let's go back and listen to this little section and tell me if you can hear something in the background going, ooh, or it's in my head. <laughs> heard that. That had kind of a pop vibe to it, that, that crescendo right there. <laughs> that was absolutely ginormous, guys. And mind-numbing for me. It, it is. It was just the percussionists. Well, they all earned their cabbage that day in that session. <laughs> but that Tim, the the you know the percussion section sometimes is made up of a couple of guys sometimes and gals. Uh, you know the timpani. You've got the um, uh, the two bells and you know they they're broken up into different you know sections because obviously you know you can have the snare going and then you have the timpanis going and stuff like that these guys definitely earned it for this last 10 minutes um when i was when i kind of went back i hope you didn't mind that i stopped and kind of went back you know a little bit and that's what i think i like i'm going to be able to have fun doing here on twitch is that it's, whether it's a curse or not, my ears pick up these things. I also have, I don't know, some people call it that I have some kind of condition because I see colors and a lot of times when I'm listening to music like this, it's almost like a typewriter. You guys remember what a typewriter was? But let's just say it's a word doc of music notes just going, you know, and then, and it's all its layers. So my, my mind is, I'm, I'm a mess. What can I say? I'm a ventriloquist. I got voices in my head. What do you want? Um... um where was I going? I just had a brain fart. Oh, God, I derailed myself. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, is that when you hear these subtle, unique parts, that's why I stopped it and I moved it back a little bit and I said, okay, maybe it's just me. Are you hearing this kind of wavering, little melodic thing happening in the background? Now, I couldn't pinpoint that for the life of me in, in instrumentation. Like, who's doing that? Where's that coming from? Could there be some hybrid addition of other sounds very possible but if it is it's for those subtle little nuances and stuff like that you know and and like i said <clears throat> to to know and since i don't play these games then i don't you know but i am going to buy i guys gals i ordered a paddle <laughs> i'm going to stick with what i know i'm going to stay in my lane i actually ordered a usb paddle so I'm going to be learning how to play soon, okay? I just And I think I have to get a video card or something. So I'm going to slowly get myself in it. But because I don't play the game against this kind of music, the kind of energy um, that this much this must bring you guys as gamers is, is insane. It's got to be intense and it's, it, it, and it's intoxicating. You know, and I said this, I think that's the magic too of what I'm learning about video games and stuff is that, you know, we watch a movie, we can watch our favorite movie, maybe movie, you know, a few times a year and stuff. But when we're playing a game like this and we're in charge of what's happening in front of us and you know, getting that experience, both soundscape, um, you know, explosions and all this sort of stuff and, and sound effects and music, it's mind numbing. But, you know, I, I, I will say one thing. Marty, when I did that podcast, we were talking about Halo um, he was also the sound design director 
I don't know if I got that right. And he was, I hate to say the word against, but he wasn't really for music going through the campaigns on Halo. You know, that the music was things that happened, you know, in between fading of scenes or stuff in most cases. So for the wall-to-wall music, I think, maybe there were some. Got, were, there, were there some Halo scene or campaigns that did have music through it or maybe some Tom-Toms or something? Audio director, thank you. Uh, Tom-Toms or something through it, but didn't have this kind of hugeness to it. You know, and, and that, that's a decision by the, you know, the developers and, and guys like Marty and stuff like that who, who do that. But I'm, I'm, I'm just like listening to this. I think I need to, I, I want to take a chill for a second, but I can't because I'm having fun now. But um, give me a second, guys, and I'm going to drink my coffee and take a look at some of these other, uh, yes, uh, the pumpkin eater. I don't know how to get a suggestion box in. I tried, I was trying in vain and download an app and do this, but I promise by next week, I'll get a suggestion box and stuff like that. Plus, like I said, today is my very first day to like, you know, just the anxiety of doing it. I'm afraid to hit the wrong things at the moment. As long as you can hear me, see me, and what I'm playing right now, I'm good. But thank you for that. I am looking up a suggestion box. Same composer, huh? God, this was 17 minutes long. What year was this released? Nineteen ninety four. Okay, now we hear the obvious limitations of the sound card. I, I, I'm still learning about uh, with the video games. I mean, I'm, I'm very well with the bit aspect of the of it but i i just i guess as video games got uh bigger and better uh and technology changing i guess these sound cards were capable of holding more information it just makes sense right from 8 to 12 to 16 or whatever um it's now obviously he's using a church organ as the core of the heaviness you know the demonic deathness of what's being written here. Is that what I'm seeing here in the hold card? Um, looks like she's writing some kind of demonic kind of thing and I, I don't know, I, I guess I shouldn't really look at that, but if you notice everything's in the pocket in, in, in your headsets, I think most of you are probably listening to headsets, yeah? Um, that now the mix and everything is kind of funneled in here, but what you do get is this kind of, yes, the chromatic movement is insane on this. Um, and I love that, that he used that male choir for that. But what I loved to give just a little bit of depth and richness is there was that little um, sequence that would kind of fade, kind of phase shift or, or kind of not flange, but kind of pan in and out here just to give you a little bit of depth. But everything was once again funneled down here. And just like I had said earlier about any earlier 8-bit, you know, kind of stuff, um, because of the limitation of what the card was able to project as far as sound, you had to be a hell of a lot more detailed with your compositions in there because you didn't have the chance to 
make this fatter and bombastic and layer it and big unison sound and stuff like that. So even the choir sound and stuff is right here in the pocket. But what I'm really enjoying is, is um, the details in the melody that's being written here, but the anxiety that the, uh, the sequence is causing and the heaviness with that, org that church organ vibe. I mean, that's how I feel. How about you? <laughs> Magetic armor. Hey, guitar assassin, what's up? Seems to me like somewhere in the game, this is a super somber kind of... You have died, or you will be dying soon. These are like, you know, these, they're, they're triggered samples, quite a bit of them. I think to get the most impact out of um, the limitation of the card. So they're using these mono um, samples that are triggered. You can hear the pop on them. Not pop like click, but the way they're being accented. Oh, it already looped? It's, yeah, I'm beginning to go, hmm? Okay. Oh. So this is the second phase, right? Is that what you guys are telling me? Love how he's getting that sound out of that snare. Can you imagine him with the MIDI gun or doing it slow and then speeding it up into the tempo? You hear the popping of the. Oh, oh, oh. You can hear the gating or the gatiness of those uh, triggers. Syncopation and animation. So is this still part of the big boss fight that's going on here? Or is it like like it did it was it more heavier than the first half that I heard, or is it more of a... Okay, did somebody just fall off a cliff or something? such a thing as a renaissance gothic vibe 
how he's playing that uh, that church organ. I read that about uh, Umatu being a very big uh, prog rock fan. So there is some repetitiveness going on through here that I've heard in the first section. So once again, not being... Should, should there be a place where I stop here and move on? Let me know, please. Oh, there's a heavy metal version of this? God, could you imagine if like Bohemoth tackled something like this or one of those bands that are like full on you know there's another phase coming okay no I just let it ride if you don't mind me drinking coffee while I listen to it and jam out with you some of it can be a little predictable in the sense that like if you're a composer you can tell where some of the phrasing is about to come very daunting very this little section right here. Is this like a reprieve section of the video game? Oh, there's a lot of fan remixes of Winged Angel. One Winged Angel. Oh, I see. So is that when other arrangers or composers or singers are doing their own version of it and then they put it out on YouTube? Is that what the remixes are? I mean, it's a lot like a remix, like a DJ remix. I don't know, I'm not familiar. All right, thank you. Yeah, that, that is some super badass playing. And you can't fake that. You have to be well-versed in that kind of old-school style of composition with the church organs and stuff like that. You must die. Very 1700s, late late 1700s, early 1800s in its composition. So does that does that match what is on the video game in a Renaissance kind of look? Because that's what this is giving me uh, that particular type of performance. That was Lupia. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's very operatic, okay. Hey, Shawnee, thanks for coming by. There's some truth to that. There's a little comment here that classical music is just, uh, what was that? Metal without the electricity. <laughs> Oh, steampunk.
Okay, so quick question. I guess we're going into phase four, but if you don't make it past that part of the game, then you're hearing that every time you're playing through it, correct? Thank you. Jesus. Holy smokes. What is that? Some uh, Euro Electro DNB? With a little bit of the sound of the doors. <laughs> it loops until you die. Okay, gotcha. What's happening here in the game? It's got to be like the full on final battle, right? Or something like that. Listen to it. This is where the prog rock comes in, I guess, right? That you guys were telling me about with this composer. It's like a 5 4 over 4 4 bass line. What a badass bass line that is. Oh, that sampled guitar, though. <laughs> Jeez! That's Guthrie Govan type fusion, prog fusion going on there. Yeah, a little bit ELP going on there. Sometimes I wish some of the more prog metals would mix in the same way where, you know, that bass really had, you know, get you there by uh, the, you know, the thingies there and again. <laughs> oh, no way with the hi hats. Check that out, uh, Not Boy Amused, I think, Amutus. <laughs> Doesn't that give you like 60s prog vibes? Well, if any of you remember 60s prog vibes. Oh, was that? That was a clown's laugh? That guitar sample kind of reminds me of an old Kurzweil sound. I'll have to check that out, Autumn Clearwater. Jeez. This isn't a video game? This is insane! Jeez. So far the stream's been doing okay, thanks for asking. Still got nerves, but I'm going. Almost there, almost at the end. Well, 
What a way to bring you out of that intense prog section. Now this right here is very 70s prog rock sounding, like sticks or something like that, or an ELO or um, Edgar Winter kind of vibe. Yeah? No? No worries, I'll be here for a little longer, for sure. Yeah, there's the there's the clown laugh, right? Is that the clown laugh you guys were talking about? Man, that was crazy. That was absolutely so cool and so crazy. This is this is why for me, two two things I want to say before we go on for a second. Um, for me, I some people sometimes leave a comment on. You know, if I'm a composer, why I'm not breaking down in a particular way as a composer might in a theoretical and more advanced language. Number one, I forgot a lot of it. I studied theory when I was younger and all that sort of stuff, and then I ended up being a working composer afterwards and didn't rely on theory and stuff like that to write my music. Theory is an incredible part of the music world, and it's so technical, and the finesse of knowing all this stuff is so cool. But as a, as a composer and where I was going in my life, I never used it. So I'm not very well, like the modes and all kinds of stuff. It catches me off guard and I've learned very quickly if I make a mistake on the internet, boy, do they come for me hard. What kind of freaking composer are you if you don't even know what the mode was during that chord change and stuff? And, and I don't mock them for it, even though I just did. <laughs> Um, because I respect the fact that they are very educated and they love, you know, the theory aspect. My whole thing is being whatever this is that I do here, a reactor, or whatever, is to try to break down what I'm hearing through my years of, of being a composer and just kind of relaying it in a way where I could say, you hear this? This, this is why you're feeling this. And it's just obviously an opinion, too. This whole thing is just an old guy's opinion. Maybe that's why I'm on a little itty bitty island in the middle of the Pacific, 2,500 miles away from any, you know, major landmass and stuff like that. So that's why I don't do the little deeper, heavier hitting stuff. And um, so, you know, I've just carved my little niche as how I do what I do. And I try to be really super authentic as well and, you know, stay in my lane. The heavy metal channel that I started was by accident, was because my, you know, my stepdaughter had asked me and I did... A tool song and it blew up and I uh, had no intention I'm, I wanted to go on a matter of fact I wanted to go on tour with the um, puppets to do the hospital tour I had a 100 hospital tour scheduled March 20th of 2020 I was supposed to leave to go to Spokane Washington and go across the country for a hundred hospitals with the puppets visiting children's in, in the hospitals and stuff but COVID shut that down so then I was like <sighs> what am I gonna do with my life and um, and this opportunity came, but when I got into the, the world of like putting out an opinion, sometimes some of the heat that came back was like, oh, wait a second, guys, I'm just trying to have some fun here. Give me a sec, give me a break. And then I finally got the thick skin that you're supposed to get as you go through this journey. But I really just want to be authentic with all of you out there. And, and you know, sometimes I might not catch things on the fly because especially like music that I'm experiencing here, and this is part two to my little explanation here is why I love doing what I'm doing here is, um, you guys are taking me on a journey I've never been on as a composer. That's what the heavy metal channel is about. You know what I mean? So that whole vibe of like, hey, I've been a little box doing little itty bitty, you know, hundreds if not thousands of tracks of music of just defined pieces of work. And I had no idea that existed. And in this case, you know, as far as this is concerned, you know, this is really super badass for me that you guys are, you know, guiding me on it. So anyhow, so be it. Um, what am I going to do right now for a second? <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so I did three Final Fantasy, and I know I'll, I'll eventually get back to that. Um, yeah, I got a heavy metal channel. Is that what you guys are saying? If I got heavy metal channel? Yeah, just in case, I guess I did it right here on my About page here on Twitch. Um, there's links to my channels. I guess I'm supposed to say there's links to my channels. Yay! There's you know the YouTube link to the video OST, and then there's a link to uh, the Decomposer Lounge. Get it? 
old composer, decomposer, pff, sorry, just saying. Um, so there, there's my plug. And I don't know anything about donations. I don't know, I put this little thing here, but I don't know how to get people to donate. I don't know where buttons are. I just put a little also down there, a little click through thingy about buy me coffee or something. So I'll learn that. That's not why I'm here necessarily at all. I mean, coffee has gone up with inflation, but right now I'm just enjoying this experience. So that's what this is all about. So I appreciate that. Okay, dad jokes, dad jokes for the win. Okay, uh, let me see here. Let me read a little bit of this. Donations and tips, I think, aren't available to me yet. Oh, okay, so I guess I got to earn some creds or I got to be here long enough, huh? Okay, that's fine. I'm totally cool with it. You know, I have a wonderful group of people in a community on Patreon that are fantastic. And I'm, you know, I, 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 they're like my executive com uh, producers of my slow burns. So if you've ever seen any of my slow burns on the Decomposer Lounge, I did my very first slow burn on the World Music Channel with that halo, right? You guys see that? It was about an hour long and I chose different things from that, you know. So, you know, if you want to participate in that, there's a Patreon link. But I don't even think I put it down here because this is not what I'm doing this for. Uh, this is from three years ago. One last question before I start this. When, what year was this game released? So I can kind of put a head stamp to it. Anybody tell me? When this, the scourge of fury is when this particular 2020, just a couple of years ago. Okay, great. Okay, here we go, guys. Mama say, mama saw me, ma kusa. Who said that? You know who said that? Ooh, good, let's get some EDM in there. Oh shit, this is badass. Michael's right. That little drop right there still kept the root note in there. They made it dissonant in that little area of bat. That was great. So it sounds to me like a tuned down acoustic. I thought for, no, you see, on this side here, so this sounds like a tuned down acoustic, but on this side it sounds like something traditional, possibly from um, Pakistan, India, from that. This sounds like like a sick unplugged version of a metal track. Think about that. That riffiness too.
You know what's cool about this too is that the guitar and this instrument in two different tones, more of the bass line. So he's got the, if you're listening to cans, this guitar is holding the warmer tone, whereas this instrument, which I don't, it's not a dulcimer, but I can't pin it, is keeping you peaked here in the EQ split. If you're imagining a heavy metal band that would cover this or be, or this would be that unplugged version of it, what would it be to you? Like I get a little tool, I get a, but I mean, at the same token. There we go. Woo! I had no <laughs> Okay, I hate to cut you off while the head bobbing's going on right now, and this is what I do do. Okay, totally kicked my ass when that came in right there because I was just, I was thinking, okay, this is gonna be kind of this super cool hypnotic trance kind of uh, Middle Eastern vibe composition that's gonna keep us meandering through it because don't know what's happening with gay music and stuff, and it doesn't have like any kind of predictable structure of like, oh, this is gonna be, oh, here comes the hook, here comes the bridge, here comes the turnaround. So we never know, at least for me in this, what I'm learning here, you never know when these changes come. And so I was already saying, doesn't this sound like a fully unplugged? <laughs> you guys are probably going, wait, you, you old composer, wait until this section comes. And it just hits, it just comes right at you so hard. And what I really love about that is the fact that even though this got really super punchy when the drums and the guitar came in, it wasn't really super overwhelming, but it was a great lift in the power and stuff. And like I said, though, what I wanted to mention, I just want to re-mention again, is that the acoustic guitar it could have been detuned or something like you know or an alternative tuning but really kind of managed the bottom end of the sound you know from beetle fart to dog whistle you know from zero to 16k really kind of held that down but then that other instrument that was actually in unison of that was representing that higher um element it kind of kept us you know in that sharper kind of uh, part uh, not sharp is in tune but uh, that higher end kind of glow, you know, and then of course the melody. I mean, the melody is great, but I didn't know if uh, I. I'm, I'm. I was trying to listen if they were using. Um, it, it's not called a ceremony. I can't remember what's the name of that instrument. It's the thing, you know, with the thing, and the people go. Wee, 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 I forget. A thermone, a thermone, or something, or something like that. But it, that was killer. So when they come in and hit us with this, I mean, come on. Theremin, thank you. Oh, that's huge sound. You know what's cool? You know what's still going through this whole arrangement that started from the beginning? It's that little shaker.
Love the engineering on the drums on this one. Squishy, punchy uh, kick drum. Okay, oh, we're almost over on this. Quick question, is the, is the composer of this, um, is this much like a Mick Gordon kind of a thing where it's one composer did this whole thing or, or is there at a, at a point where maybe they've enlisted a band to do this extra section? You kind of know what I'm talking about. I mean, composers are well. Like I use Mick as an example because he can. He, that's his genius, you know, being able to transcend that. But this was so unique. It had that EDM start or that electric music kind of vibe with the acoustics, you know, very swarmy kind of vibe, and then they kicked really into it. So, yeah, he did it all alone. What is I I R C? I don't know what that means. Sorry. Uh, Darren Korb is his name. I guess you guys are saying. Okay. Multi instrumentalist. If I recall, <laughs> thank you. It's not. All right, guys, let's continue. I just lost the vibe. Turn around there. Little flip on the rhythm. What a great riff. Shaker's still there. That was huge. And I love the guitar tones in that as well. You know, now, you know, this is this is that part of the journey with, you know, the OSTs that I'm just so enamored with. I did something too on my um, channel from um, Cowboy Bebop Cowboy or Cowboy Bebop or something like that. And, and please, 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 I don't mean any disrespect if I can't remember band members' names, composers' names, song names and stuff. I. I've had like I played hockey for 20 years definitely have had some trauma there and a few tumbles out in the water and stuff and been hit in the head so I my short my memory is just a mess so you know um, just just bear with me because some people go how dare you not know the name of the guitar player of that band he's a legend I'm like sorry all right guys let's do this and like I always say on my YouTube channels this is Persona 5 OST, Rivers in the Desert. All right. I'm sorry. Should have been a game ho game show. Game ho. Game show host. <laughs> I'm such a bobo. Here we go. The thing that's different about... Sorry, guys. Oh, coming coming at us with a straight four four, just giving it to us real. Just, I love the unison with that dark synth at the bottom and the guitar. It's not worth never, and I've got to make oh, it's a song. This time could be my moment. If this a mirage or a chance to fulfill my mission. Mm 
Haunting background vocals. They're way back in the mix, but listen to them. Oh, nice change. God, this is just oozing of 70s disco. Makes the cake wiggle. Oh, that was great. That string line. That was killer. Somebody tell me what's going on when this is playing. What's happening action wise. It doesn't sound like it would be something ultra violent and dark, but I could be wrong. Oh, you're fighting a boss. Okay, it's a showdown. But does it come with the vocals? Or is this like an extended version with vocals when, when they're fighting the boss? Okay. Okay, the reason why I'm stopping here is I just want to make a, a couple of really super cool points. As I said earlier while I talked over the video, which I'm going to try to not do so much of and, and do a little more of these stops, but um, the, the down the middle mono of that dark synth bottom end seems to be what, you know, the composer decided to do, you know, to hold down that part of the pocket, which it would be the bass. The guitar at first I thought was sampled, but then I heard some, str um, some slide, some finger noise in between the chords. So it was really cool to hear that as well. Now obviously when they get four on the floor when it gets into that disco grind, I go, okay, well that could be anything because that particular pattern transcends generations and up to now. It, it could have been Euro Digi, it could have been all these other you know styles of, of music that actually hold it, you know, house and, and stuff like that. But the real take back for me was the melodic composition of the vocals and, and the performance. Had that very 70s kind of uh, vibe, uh, Bee Gees, big hair, you know, uh, artists and stuff like that with the bell bottoms at the, you know, in the performances and stuff in the shows for those of you who remember. Of course, if you're young, you can look that up on uh, YouTube. But I, I once again, th now, remember, I, I don't know, is this a um, um, Japanese-based game? So was it developed in, in Japan? You know, I, I don't, I, I still don't know much about how to separate, you know. Okay, yes, uh, uh, JRPG. So is that like an RPG with, uh, with juice? I'm kidding. Hey, somebody did finally tell me what that meant. Thank you. Japanese role play. Okay, because that's the thing that I've noticed. Maybe you guys can agree with me on this. A different way to phrase that. Uh, maybe you folks feel the same way. That the Japanese uh, developed games and stuff really go and reach deeper into music genres and don't have a problem pulling from or being influenced by or um, um, revitalizing and adding you know compositions that are very time stamped into a genre or into a time period you know what I'm saying where I think with my very small very very small experience with video games that I've been listening to more of the progressive video games notwithstanding the huge orchestral pieces that are done from, you know, all composers of, of different nationalities that are contributing to video games. Um, but the more modern, let's say the last 12, 10 years, that very few that I've listened to my channel, more progressive music 
compositions outside of the orchestral stuff. And of also, of course, with new technology and new sounds that the composers are using and stuff, you know. <clears throat> I think that's how we get into the, you know, super great composers like Mick Gordon and what he did. I've only listened to two of his tracks. Maybe I should do one of his tracks before I sign off on this. Um, and how he boldly utilizes the power of gent and soundscape grind, you know, that kind of a thing. So anyhow, that that was that was <coughs> I, I did ask a question in there somewhere. I think I said, uh, yeah, anyhow, let me, let me read a couple of these for a second. Can you sleep? Yeah, I heard it was a chainsaw that that Mick used it in that. Anyhow, OK, I'm sorry. If I get too geeked out on the on the comments, uh, I don't want to uh, lose interest uh, from other people who are enjoying the music. Here we go. And those strings are a very defining arrangement that really connotates or dictates or makes you vibe that 70s. You know, and listen to the double bass at the bottom. Oh, this is nice. You hear the little sequence, a little percussion sequence? Sounds a little bit like a ghost note of a snare, doesn't it? Act fast, 231. Listen to the bottom end. I'm going to stop this for a second. Now, I'm going to go back because now we're at the end. So this is a good spot for me to go back. Um, I really, really focus on strings because actually that's... I'm more of a string arranger and a composer of that nature. Back in the uh, late 70s, 80s, and 90s, my job was to be that guy that filled in extra arrangements, and, and being a string arranger was a very important part of that to me. So I'm very focused on the string sounds. But I'm going to go back, and I'm just going to play back about another 15 seconds, and you hear the strings going, but I want you to really just take a purposeful listen to the bottom end and listen to how the cello and the double bass, that's what... For those of you who don't know, you know the guys that stand up with the big bass. It's called a double bass. Um, listen to their arrangement. So you have this high end going da 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 da. But in the mix, sometimes if unless I mean, really truthfully, to listen to a piece of music is not to rip it apart like I do. But I can't help it. I'm afflicted. I'm a composer, so I listen for that stuff. And for those of you who are interested, you're here. But I want you to listen for that. So let me take this back a little bit and listen for the double bass and the cello at the bottom. And it favors a little bit the side, which actually, if you are looking at a stage of an orchestra and you always see it as a half moon, you'll always see the violins, the violas, the cellos, and the double bass. So, you know, when it, for me, when I listen to how well an engineer has approached a string, uh, string mix, a lot of it has to do with, it also depends on so many different variables but more organic is if you can close your eyes and visual that half moon kind of vibe so let's go back a little bit now let's listen for that uh, double bass cello vibe going on on the right side okay let me take it back to about here uh, oh god i'm sorry you can hear that stuff <laughs> That was it. 
Uh, yes, of course I'll be doing more. I, I'll do this until everyone's sick and tired of me doing this. And even then I might just do it, just to entertain myself. Sorry, I was answering a question from uh, uh, somebody. Me, blah, 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 blah. I forgot. Anyhow. So yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it when it comes to the strings. The string arrangements for me is what really sold me on that 70s kind of vibe. You know, because that was a very big thing with the Bee Gees and, and all those, you know, uh, disco-y things. Was, strings were huge part of arrangements with that until synthesizers started taking over in the early 80s, the DX7, the Juno 106 and stuff like that. And they kind of went out, you know, into that thing. Okay. Yeah, it is very fun to listen to. It's just like a very, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to say John Travolta where you want to go, uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay. Um, it's a groove is right. Okay. So, um, all right. Let's, let's, let's go hard. Let's, let's go for a one that's a kick in the pants here. You guys, send me one from Doom Eternal. And for those of you that want me to do other, you know, oh, let's, please, you know there's a ton of them. I'm going to be here till. But let's do a little uh, Doom Eternal. Uh, that's one I've been getting a lot. The only thing they fear is you. Uh, I get a lot of that. Super Gordon, that's not yet. The only thing if you, wow, everyone's really hitting me. What is the only, BFG Division. Is that the name of the software company? Or that, it, or that the software company that built that particular version of the game? Thanks, Gunners. Oh, that's the song name. Okay, good. Thanks. I don't know. Okay. All right, guys. It looks like I'm going to be doing... Oh, okay. Thank you. That's why I asked the questions. I know not what I do not know until I do not know, and then you tell me, and I still may not remember. <laughs> All right. The only thing they fear is you. You sold me. We're doing it. I, I got to look down at my fingers when I type. I'm sorry. I suck. I know you guys are probably rippers at this, but uh, yeah. how many of you guys still have to look down at your fingers? Uh, the only thing I fear is, oh, is you. Doom Eternal. Ding, 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 ding. Not for broadcast. Nope, that's an ad. Um, so is this the one that I should play? Uh, the 12 million? Oh, 12 million. I'm probably going to get a copyright strike for this, aren't I? Or at least blot it out. Okay. Yeah, is that the one I should do, guys? Okay. Looks like I'm doing this. All right. I got I got to save some Doom Eternal just in case Mick does actually make it on a podcast or Twitch with me cuz I think that would wouldn't that be super badass if I get composers to join me here on Twitch so we can talk about, you know, if I make it if I make it let's say game centric and we get a composer and we play with the composer there and we can really kind of just geek out you know uh over the music and stuff i think that'd be badass all right stand by all right i just want to check to see if, oh i got a text i knew i heard something oh that's my mom checking to see how i'm doing well, I'll talk to her in 45 minutes. All right. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm so stoked. Mom's still with me. Yeah, I don't take that for granted. Okay, here we go. I know, right? Hi, Mom. Really, seriously. I mean, you know, while my dad was on the road as a composer for the first 16 years of my life, and he had to do all these live shows in Vegas and, and New York and Atlantic City and, and San Francisco and stuff, my mom... You know, all old school Hawaiian mom style raising. Get rubber slippers, smack on my head sometimes, but she's still with us. All right. 
<laughs> okay, we're doing this, guys. Mick Gordon, the only thing they fear is you. Derm, doom, doom eternal. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, um, here we go. God, it's so menacing. Jesus. Man, there's like a pulsing compression on this track. Okay, I know it's sacrilege to stop. I know everyone's head banging, go no! <laughs> but I got it for a second, guys. All right, so I think there's, you know, the magic and what I love about this is this integration, this hybrid integration for hardcore, edgy digital composition that actually supports the banginess of the gent. You know, and, and, and am I correct to say that it's gent? I'm still not 100%, I'm not Nick Nocturnal, I'm not Finn McKenty, those guys are geniuses and they're very passionate, they know everything. But is it, it, it has that gent, yeah, the, the whiplashy gent. Anyhow, I'm sorry that you got whiplash when you paused, I'm sorry. But the fact that there's this integration, I promise after this I won't, I won't talk until at the, at the end, but this integration of the, this heavy digi grind that's behind his uh, chugginess at only certain points, because there's times where it sounds like he's bending down from it and then bending back into it, you know, which is an art form into itself. I can't, I bought my first seven string last year when I tried to write some chuggy stuff, which I kind of can write a little bit, but, not with the authenticity and in, in the core of what like guys like Mick do. Um, are you guys hearing kind of a compression pulse? I don't know if it's, if it's a compression from YouTube. So you guys who are the gamers, don't you feel like this kind of pulsing compression with the drums that's happening? Yeah, you guys hear it, right? You know, it's got that kind of, you know, and, and sometimes that happens when you have, back in the old days, back when there used to be, you know, tape reel to reel, you know, there would be tape saturation and then there would also be um, a comp a natural compression that would actually happen with tape saturation at times, you know. So that thing, it breathes. It's its own beast, you know, with the engineering aspect of it, you know. And then finally, you know, before I get into it, the drums are fat as can be. You guys thought I was going to say something else, I know. But those drums are fat, man. It's just, there's a unique way of producing music like that that I could never, you know, it's just, it's mind numbing. Okay, so let's go back to it. I'm not gonna say anything for the rest of the track. Hello? Oh, was this one of those tracks that wasn't mixed right? Ah, oh boy, there. We're going into that one, aren't we? That is so badass. That he's letting that sequence happen with the synths, but he's still following it up with the guitars, like in unison.
love that. The sequencing that he morphs in and out. That right there. It's kind of face shifting sequencing that's happening there. Menacing. Oh, man. If they would have had this music when I was a skater in the 70s, I would have had my lid blown off with this. Oh, this is what's happening. It's like a full demon fest kill session. Look at me, I'm chewing my freaking nails. I'm getting sweaty, isn't it? My coffee. Love that ethereal ambience happening in the back. Is this a piece from one single campaign or section of gameplay? Jesus, it's so heavy. That's a catchy little hook. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. That's so freaking catchy. And especially if you're playing the game. That's got to be wedged in there. You're going to sleep at nighttime, you're going to be hearing that shit in your head. Ooh, that's killer. <laughs> that was huge. <laughs> okay, so without getting into the issue of uh, what happened to Mick and, and that whole thing, um, and because I'm not familiar with Doom, <clears throat> I think the first one I did uh, on my uh, channel, uh, on my world music channel, was that one that was of questionable another person got their hands on it and did editing and they were talking about clips and and bad edits and mixes or whatever something of that nature and then i did one another follow-up on that on one of uh, a doom that was audibly obviously a hell of a lot different i thought it was a little more powerful it was one that mick i think did from 2016. i i i don't have my head wrapped around on what games mick did and what games Mick did but got caught up in that like tornado of, of stuff that happened in the last couple of years or during the process of that game where they were promising a soundtrack or something. What I will say is because I don't know the difference, um, I still think this piece was an absolute masterful cru bone crushing piece. And since I don't play Doom, I'm looking at this and I have seen some of the, not cut scenes, but um, you know, when you watch 
you know, I was watching some of Mick's stuff, and I was like, going, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. They're killing aliens and stuff. Um, but maybe that's what people were talking about, that pulsing compression that I heard that to me sounded like could it have been over-compressed and over-normalized. Because that's what will cause that. A lot of times <clears throat> in the industry, we have something called mastered like a candy bar. And for those of you who know how to look at wave files, like if you take a song and you drop it in something and you could see the song wave file, um, in mastering, if you, sl if you slam it with the compression and normalize it, and a limiter too, and a limiter can cause this, all of a sudden what looks like, you know, here's the song, but it looks, we call it the candy bar. If you unwrapped a candy bar, it would just be And that's because there's no life at the very top, even, even by the most 0.2% of a decibel little bit of breathing room at the top that also gives a very unique life a breathing room at the head or at the top and bottom of of a mix so when it's over normalized or over limited and somebody is not keeping an eye on certain uh, eq values you know um you get that <laughs> that kind of suction feeling and stuff and i think you can only really hear it if you're wearing headsets. let me ask you here's a good here's a great question for you guys really quick um, and it, it'll help me too for the future. Do all gamers play with headsets on? So the reason why I ask that is because I, it'll give me a little better idea of at least like if I'm calling left or right. Not at all. Okay, so a lot of people will do it through, I guess, a sound bar or a good TV. Is that? Okay, wow. Okay, so, so maybe it's a split. You know, I, I, I'm assuming, and I, I say that word with respect, assuming, but gamers that play multiple players, I guess you have to have the headsets, right? With the little speak, with the little mic, so you guys can, you know, do that thing. Depends on how you prefer. You know, hey, you know what? When I was back in the 2000s, when I played Halo, I didn't use headsets. I had an okay system in my studio, so I was able to, but um, um, because I mean, because some of the things is some of these nuances that I pull out, like when I was talking about the last track or the track before, when I was talking about the little sequence that was happening that almost sounded like ghost notes on the drum. And not until I pulled it out, some people chimed in going, yeah, totally. I heard that. You're not going to hear that on a sound bar and you're not going to hear that. You know, even if you got a badass speaker system, unless you have it just set up just well enough. And now I guess there's gaming chairs where speakers are in the chair. I think that's kind of cool, I guess, if it works. Um, so listen, I have time for one more. And um, so, uh, let me see here, because my throat, I'm, <laughs> I'm showing my tap out. I'm almost MMA tapping out here because my voice is getting dry. And that's when I start coughing up an oyster on a half lung, and that's no fun. Um, so, stand by for a second. Let me rig something here real quick. Drink a quick thing of water here. Stand by. Choose my. Somebody said, "Choose my own." You know, I wish I had enough experience. Um, Ooh, the Annihilation OST sounds like something I definitely want to put on my list. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm sitting in the chair a long time. I actually have a gaming chair that I should have used. The problem with the gaming chair is, though, when I play guitar, it has those... See this? I can flex this down, so if I want to be like this, but when I do guitar, I can kick it up. On my gaming chair, I can't, and so I didn't bring it out. It probably would have been a little more comfortable on this go. Maybe I'll try it next time. Um, let me see what else I got here. Is there anything from... Z I just did Zelda. So, hey, how about... I mean, I mean I've mean, i done some metal, I've done opera, I mean, classical music and stuff. How about something from Journey? If I'm going to choose something, how about something from Journey? That, that, that game Journey, would that be okay? I think Journey's more of a super chill game, I think, from what I read from the comments. You know, that actually, actually, from what I understand from the comment, from the comments, that Journey is very music and sound oriented and very, you know, is very much relies on the music. 
because um, apparently there isn't a lot of you know sound effects and things exploding and stuff that it's just like eat mushrooms kind of journey kind of vibe and stuff <laughs> I don't know why I said that and if it has nothing to do with it I'm sorry that's just kind of the vibe I got I was like wow man this person's floating dude this is kind of cool <laughs> sorry all right guys let's do this Thank you so much for hanging out. I'll, I'll, I'll do this like I do it on my regular videos. All right, everybody. This is From the Game Journey, video game journey. And this is by composer Austin Wintory, of which came as huge high regards by Mr. Marty O'Donnell when I did that podcast with him. He was speaking very, he was glowing about this composer's work. So uh, I'm glad to bring it to you here on Twitch. So let's do this. I was born for this. All right. Sorry, I was campy, wasn't I? Beautiful heart, man. Mm. Listen to how the harp is holding the bottom end, the bass line. Or at least back in that part. Okay, sorry to hit the Zen button on that. I know everybody was just probably all zipped out on that. What's beautiful about this is this ambient ethereal approach um, to the string arrangements and keeping everything wide open and flowing, especially the vocals. Now, I'm sure that um, during this part of the gameplay, I don't know anything about. It. I really do have to dive into this game on this, um, but it's 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 like this this avatar, or this 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 character seems to be floating from one you know, getting getting an achievement or something and, and continuing on this particular journey. Um, what I love about this is the unique use of the harp as being the percussive element that's really kind of keeping us in a rhythm. And so in certain places you can hear how the emphasis is, well, no, that's high, you know, harp space is way over here for the harpist. And how as, 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 as sparingly as the composition is for the harp, it really is giving us something to latch onto for that bottom end. Because a lot of stuff is happening in the upper frequencies. That beautiful sultry voice, you know, that has very light, if any, vibrato at all, but very just kind of gliding and stuff. And what I love too, and I've mentioned this, I think the very first track I did on this Twitch um, show, is talking about in the less is more aspect, if you're only doing a small section of instruments and stuff like that, leaves it wide open for like, this, this track opened up with three different melodic hooks for me. 
And that's what I love about this kind of work is it, it could be buried. It could, it could be buried in a mix in the sense that, you know, for you experiencing the song as a whole, you're just enjoying the whole flow. But I think for me, what I love doing with these reactions, whatever it is we call that I'm doing, is just to kind of bring a little bit more light into um, the colorful options composers use in order to pull you in a direction. In this case, this kind of flowing journey. Anyhow, uh, let's continue on. I will say nothing else for the rest of this song. Slightly hopeful and haunting at the same time. What I love about this too is when the orchestrations open up, you hear the cellos coming in here, making it much broader. The spectrum, the sonic spectrum gets really nice and wide. That was killer. You know what? Did you hear that very there was a there was a, a little bit of a resonance of a leftover sound from like another instrument. There was something I couldn't pin it, but there was uh, a steel stringed instrument that was in the background doing some light arpeggiation work every now and then. But actually on that last note you can hear how you know sometimes you know if you're a guitar player and you're, you're holding out a note and as it starts to vibrate out a little bit, you know, depending on the setup of your guitar, if it's not set up perfectly, you'll hear a little light as, as the frequency shortens up on the, on the string. You hear a little, it'll go, zzz, zzz. <laughs> I heard that, that was great. These nuances on that track were just unbelievable. And like I said, it, there was kind of this haunting, soulful journey vibe, journey, vibe that that arrangement was giving. And the meandering melody that she was singing as well kept it very haunting which i think is kind of this whole I, I really i really think that journey might be a video game that i should uh kind of maybe you know there's so many like there's elden ring i got people saying i need to learn elden ring i need to learn and they're they look so cool but maybe maybe for you know <clears throat> my my biorhythms at my age maybe i should start with journey first and get a vibe of everything but um but that was a beautiful actually I just put out an email to Austin Wintery for a podcast and and somebody asked me if I knew Marty O'Donnell no, I don't know him but we just did that podcast um, so that podcast is on my um, world music reaction channel and I probably did it about two months ago and um, he really lit up on some really cool information uh, about um, um, that one track that I did was it called the final what was that Guys, help me out. What's that? What's that really super famous track from the Marty O'Donnell Salvatore compositions? The final was it the final fight or something? I'm sorry. Remember, I told you about my memory. Um, that it was really funny because um, actually Michael Salvatore had wrote that, you know. But you know, Marty came in and did the orchestration for it. But that was such a memorable, moving piece that almost didn't even make it in the video game. 
you know, and I think that's really super, um, yeah, I should wait a while for Elden Ring. I got people saying, yeah, you may want to wait for a little bit before you get in some of these bangers. Um, uh, how that particular track for Halo almost didn't even make it in there, and it's probably the most memorable and nostalgic track in all of Halo, at least for maybe the old school players that played from, was it Halo 1 or Reach or, or Return something? I don't know, the names changed as... Because I only played the first one, and then I had to get on with life. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Anyhow, guys, listen. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. Yes, never forget. Thank you. That was the name of the track, never forget. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. I can't thank you guys enough for hanging out. Um, also, thank you for the tips that I've seen kind of crawl by here that have to do with poles or straw poles and stuff like that. And um, also, like I said, these suggestions will not fall on deaf ears. Uh, I'm going to watch this, you know, just so I can nitpick what I'm doing or not doing. You know how it is. You know how that is. You know, oh, I hate. I'm picking my nose too much or I'm playing with my hat too much or something, you know. And uh, thank you so much for your support. I was really nervous doing this because I know that uh, um, this this is a... Uh, actually, it's a, it's a really cool community, but it can be kind of harsh and dark. And, and thank you some people I've been watching... Um, who have been kind of helping me with some of the, I guess, spammers or something. So listen, you guys take care. Thank you so much. The links for my channels, for YouTube are down below, and for Twitter uh, are down below. There's also a little link for a cup of coffee if somebody wants to buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, and I will be back next Saturday at 3 with a lot more of a fortified approach on how to do this. But I really had a great time with you guys. Thank you for bearing uh, through this. I, I think I got at one point like uh, 200 viewers and I guess that's really good. And I'm excited for that. Um, so that, um, I'm not worried about algorithms. I'm not worried about becoming something. But I am grateful when people do take time out of their day to show up, especially. Okay, this is my last question. How many of you that are here now we're here when I started. <laughs> this is going to be scary. How many of you are here now that when, when I started? Oh, here's me. It's a bunch of me's. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. That's super cool. Well, I know you just joined. Oh, super cool. Thank you so much. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I can talk my ass off. but uh, And even if you got here five minutes ago, I, I can't thank you enough. Still here, yes. All of you know my taglines, right? If I go long on, a, on if I go long on a video on my channels, what's the one thing I say? If you're still here, type in, "I'm still here." <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. I might edit one or two of these things and drop it on my world channel, and um, you know, um, yeah, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Uh, good retention rate. Good. Yes, I think so. You can tolerate listening to an old man talk story about music. Kind of in a lullaby, kind of grandfathery kind of way. <laughs> Do I plan on a VOD channel? What's a VOD channel? Video on demand? I don't know what that is, but I'll learn. Like somebody's teaching me how to do Discord. I don't know what Discord is. I've heard of it, but I've got to open that on and see how that works. And I'm going to do a show with somebody, a gamer. Um, Reviewer and I are gonna have a little fun where he'll teach me stuff and we'll talk about music Vod is cake too <laughs> Thank you so much for putting up with me on that cake joke boy. That was really bad Okay, autumn clear water. Thank you very much. All right got fat loads and cake God, I don't know how to get I don't know how to take like like nuggets and cake, right? <laughs> Big fat nuggets. and cake. I can't anymore. You guys hear how I cough. I had a moment where I was right up there with everybody else, and then negative. Doctor says, you shall die soon if you continue. Try these gummy bears. <laughs> All right, guys, this is it. I am going to uh, sign off three hours and 25 minutes. I will be back next Saturday at 3, and I will be posting more videos on the World Music Channel. And I'm also going to be doing a back-to-back -back periphery on my heavy metal channel uh, so um, they just released some slammers and everyone's saying you gotta do periphery bro you gotta do periphery so I'm gonna do back-to-back -back periphery on the decomposer lounge 
which is my heavy metal channel. The link is down below. The link is down below. You guys know I say that all the time. All right, guys. Thank you. You guys take care. <laughs> thank you. Great music. Take care, music ramps. All right, guys. Aloha. See ya. How do I end stream? <laughs>